Hello folks, it's yeah, <laughs> Peter Elgar here with my old, old friend the Tiger who I use for a lot of my tests and I'm going to show you something using him again because he's very helpful and, and he doesn't bite, that's the main thing doesn't growl at me and doesn't poo on the bed so he's very handy to use as a test subject because folks, today I'm going to show you what's in this box and how to work it Yes, it's the Shepherd Flash Meter. Da, 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 so we're going to do an unboxing video and I'm going to tell you how to use a flash meter. So let me get organised now. Remember, I'm not very clever at this video lot. I have to do everything in one go. <laughs> I'm very, very good at editing. Well, I was given this flash meter by a kind person with some other stuff and um, a, a, also a Vivitar 283 outfit which I should do a video about with all the gadgets and stuff all the gizmos but I'm waiting for a mains lead to come at the moment but this is a, a flash meter and it's different from the uh, continuous light meters that I've showed you in my video on the western exposure meter that is for continuous light this is a flash meter for a lot that goes flash, quick like that, as its name suggests. So what do we have is the XE88 model, whatever that means. We're doing this, we're doing one of these famous unboxing videos. <laughs> you see all these are uh, these Americans, they're very good at the unboxing, aren't they? Yeah, oops. There's an instruction book, so um I have read it. <laughs> So, but I can, I've memorised it, so we won't bother to show you everything there, but always read the instructions. Here's a nice protective case, and inside is the flash meter, put all the bits down, and inside is the case. Now, it doesn't work until you have a 9 volt battery, so you've got a little battery cover here. And I'm going to show you another Shepherd flash meter, my, my original one. Now this is a 9 volt Duracell battery and you have to be careful you put it in the correct way round with the plus and minus otherwise you can short it out and it might go bang but that is the correct way round. So on the controls here you must tell the meter the sensitivity of the film that you're using of course or the digital that you're using it, you can meet for digital subjects as well as film subjects so I've got it set in the little window to 100 ASA or ISO by turning turning this little thing here and the, the numbers change in the little window so we set it to 100 yes and then it will measure both incident light and reflected light. So I'm going to show you both. This is the little dome, similar to what I have on my western exposure meters I've showed you. And you slide that across like that for incident light. And if when it goes that way, it opens up a little cell by which reflected light will go straight into there. And um, you've got to be careful with reflected light readings, as I've explained before. That's why most pe people, and professionals especially, will use the incident method in the studio. So you've got to tell it what sensitivity film you've got, and then we measure the strength of the flash by plugging in a flash lead. Now, off camera, I've got my old Boeing's flash plugged in and on the lowest power so we plug in the synchronizing cord here to a little socket and then we take a reading there's, a, there's our friend the tiger we take an incident light reading by holding the meter towards the camera position and then you can get a reading don't point it directly to the light, you point to the camera position which is out here and then you must <coughs> zero it first by pressing up on the top here, you zero that so no, no little light appears 
Then you hold it to the position of the subject, pointing towards the camera, and press, and it flashes. Then a little bar goes across and it says number seven. So now you turn this dial to its number seven and you read off what aperture it tells you on the little scale here. And it says F11. Yes? Now, if you are doing macro photography of a close-up bit and you've got bellows extension on, don't forget you've got to allow for your macro photography bellows extension as well. That is a general reading for normal photography. So that says F11. Now, this is a fairly white subject and it's on a very lightish background, the, the bed cover here. What happens if we take a reflected light reading and it's a lot of white? Let's see if it fools the meter. So now we'll zero it, yeah, press it at the top. I shall now point it to the, the subject and we'll flash it and take a, a reflected light reading off the white little friend, the tiger. Oh, that says it says 8 now because that will be the incorrect reading you will get under exposure because it's not a grey toned subject it's a lot of white in it isn't it that's why your incident reading is more accurate because the 8 would say F16 and you'd be one stop under exposed wow wow so that's why the incident reading is always better so now, we'll look at the other flash meter I have, which is my original Shepherd. This is a FM900, this one. And um, that was bought at great expense. Luckily, it was tax deductible because I was working as a freelance. Ooh, and I could set it against tax. So we'll take the battery out of the latest one, the Shepherd, what's it called? XE88, whatever that means. Take the battery out of there. So now we'll slide that out. Battery out. We put the battery into the old original one. Correct way round. Look at the plus and the minus. Very carefully, yes, that's the correct way round. I'm gonna drop something. Excuse my head folks. Now slide that cover back on there. Now sometimes it, this one wouldn't flash with a plug, but we'll see if it works. We'll plug it in, plug the synchronising cord in here, zero it by pressing at the top. We'll hide it for the incident right read in here on our friendly tiger. Blow me! It agrees with the shepherd. What number was it? <coughs> X E A eight. <laughs> they both agree. That's good, isn't it? It both says it says seven. So that says yes. It says F eleven. <laughs> the same. So thank God for that. They both agree because sometimes if you if you get a new thing and you don't test it and you go blindly ahead without testing it, you can do a whole shoot and everything will be wrong because the meter isn't correct. <laughs> so you must test things. So now we'll do, we might as well do the reflected light reading as well. See if that agrees. We'll take the reflected light reading off of our white subject here. And that says, yeah, that says eight. So that agrees nicely with the um, meter. Both of them agree. Now with, with a, a lot of light on the subject, as we've got a lot of daylight in, the ambient light might ha have an effect on the exposure as well as the flashlight because there's a lot of daylight coming through. So what you do, you set your camera to a higher flash sync speed. So it's normally, if you've got something like a Rolly Flex or your Hasselblad, you set it to a 250th and it will kill the ambient light. Because if you're in studio conditions, of course, the ambient light is not very strong. But you've got to think, if you've got a 
camera with a very slow sync speed, like a 30th or a 60th, good old Zenith, and it sinks at a 30th, so does the Pentax 6x7, and it sinks at a 30th, and you've got a lot of ambient light, you can get overexposure, so that's something else you have to bear in mind. So there we are, that's how I use a flash meter, and I uh, hope you've learnt something, because I enjoy teaching people, as I was taught years ago by all the old fogies in the camera club when I was only 15 years old, all the old fogies of 45 and 50, oh, God, I thought those old fogies in, <laughs> but now you go to a camera club, you don't get people younger than 50 or 60, <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoy this little session and um, keep watching, you might find me on this channel again sometime. See if I can turn this thing off now. Oh, here we go. Yes, bye-bye for now, folks.